We all know that when you rub a balloon on your head, it becomes statically charged. That's because the electrons from your hair get transferred to the balloon. So much so that it can actually cause it to stick to a wall. But what if instead of rubbing it against something that loses electrons easily, like your hair, you rub it against itself? Will it still become negatively charged? In this video, we're going to be exploring the spontaneous charging that occurs when you take two of the same material and rub them together. In order to do this, I have something called a field detector. This can detect static electricity. It can tell me the magnitude of the electric field and whether it's positive or negative. We can test it on my Wimshurst machine. When I turn the handle, it statically charges these two cylinders here. And you can see that this one is positive and this one is negative. So it's working well. And if I rub a balloon on my head, the balloon becomes negatively charged and my hair is positively charged. And by the way, the reason the balloon sticks to the wall isn't because the wall is positively charged, but the wall is neutral. But the negative charges induce the molecules in the wall to flip their positive side towards the negative balloon, and that causes the balloon to stick to the wall. You can organize all materials in the world with their tendency to either gain or lose electrons. When you arrange these items in a list, it's called a triboelectric series. For example, I have three different materials here, human skin, latex rubber balloon, and a polyester blanket. If you look at the triboelectric series of these, the skin is the most positive, and then followed by the polyester, and then finally the rubber. So whatever's higher on the list will assume a positive charge when it's rubbed together. For example, if I rub together the polyester blanket and the balloon, the blanket gets a positive charge and the balloon gets a negative charge. But if I rub together my skin and the blanket, now the blanket gets a negative charge and my hand gets a positive charge. But back to our original question, what if you take a material from the triboelectric series and rub it against itself? Well, let's try it. I'll take two balloons and rub them together and one balloon seemingly randomly chooses to be positive and the other becomes negative. In fact, this happens with almost any material. For example, I have a quartz crystal here. Let's smash it and get two pieces of the same crystal. Now let's rub them together. You can see that suddenly one of them becomes positive and one becomes negatively charged. This is so odd. How are the materials choosing what happens to each one? They're the exact same material, even the same crystal, and they aren't behaving the same. What's crazy is you can see it flip sometimes. For example, when checking what would happen when the polyester blanket was rubbed against itself, one time the left side became positive, and then the next time the right side became positive. Now the other side's negative, and this side's positive. So it literally just flipped. So it seems completely random what the static charge ends up doing when it's rubbed together. It used to be thought that this phenomenon was completely chaotic and random and unpredictable. But researchers decided to look into this further. So researchers took a piece of PDMS and cut it into eight pieces that they labeled A through H. Then they had a machine that would just simply touch the pieces together five times. Then they'd measure the charge on each piece afterward. Here's their first test. They found that it was basically a random result where there was no way to predict what the charge of one piece would be, even if you tried to order it by putting all the positive pieces into the upper right and negative pieces in the lower left, things still got confusing. They found weird cycles that weren't linear. For example, in this block, G charged positively against A and A charged positively against E, but then E charged positively against G. That doesn't make sense. If E is positive to G, then E should be positive against A as well. But despite these confusing results, they did test the next day as well, and then the next day, and then the next day, and they did this for five days. After five days, they stopped having these weird loops and it stopped looking so random. Pieces that usually charge positive stayed that way, and ones that were negative stayed that way. 
So they eventually formed a mini tribal electric series amongst themselves. What's weird about this is that the pieces were behaving almost like they had a memory of what they had become. Initially, the ability to gain or lose a charge was based on local surface irregularities or impurities. So each interaction was a result of that specific pair's microscopic quirks. But after a lot of interactions with a lot of different pieces, the system began to self-organize. Each piece tended to consistently charge a certain way, and the network of interactions became transitive. That means if D beats C and C beats A, then D will always beat A. So this is all pretty mind-blowing. That means that the pieces start out with some tendency to be a certain way, but then over many interactions with other pieces, their tendencies get ingrained. They retain a memory. This is happening because the repeated interactions cause slight surface changes and tiny oxidation states to change on the surface. So that in the future, it's more likely to charge a certain way. The reason this blows my mind is because this doesn't sound like an inanimate object. It sounds like us. We come with certain random tendencies ingrained in our DNA, but then over time, depending on our environment and who we interact with, those tendencies become ingrained more and more into a solid personality, where we almost always act a certain way in a given situation. This whole experiment has made me think that I want to be less like an inanimate object and do things that aren't so predictable for my personality. What about you? And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, remember to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.